Hey there, welcome back to Story Slices, where we slice through the best Reddit tales just for you. Let's dive right into the first story. The first one is the title story, and it starts like this. I never thought I'd find myself in a standoff with an homeowner association president over access to my own pool. But life has a funny way of throwing curveballs. My name's Mike, and this is the story of how I took down a power-tripping homeowner association president who bit off way more than he could chew. It all started when my wife Sarah and I decided to move out of the bustling city to a quieter suburb. We'd been saving for years to buy our dream home, a spacious four-bedroom house with a big backyard and, most importantly, our very own in-ground pool. After months of searching, we finally found the perfect place. The house was at the end of a cul-de-sac, bordering a small wooded area. It had clearly been neglected for a while, with an overgrown yard and a pool that hadn't seen maintenance in years. But we saw the potential and fell in love. The best part? It wasn't part of any homeowner association, which meant we'd have the freedom to renovate and landscape as we pleased without jumping through bureaucratic hoops. We closed on the house in early spring and immediately got to work. I took a few weeks off to focus on fixing up the place. We repainted the exterior, replaced the rickety old fence, and spent a small fortune getting the pool cleaned and restored to working order. By Memorial Day weekend, we were ready for our first pool party to celebrate with friends and family. The morning of the party, I was out back doing some final prep work when I noticed a man in his late 50s peering over our fence. He had that look of someone who thought very highly of himself, neatly pressed polo tucked into khaki shorts, designer sunglasses perched on his nose. Excuse me, he called out in a tone that suggested he was used to being obeyed. I'm going to need you to cancel your little get-together. The community pool isn't open to residents yet this season. I blinked in confusion. I'm sorry, what? This is my private pool on my property. The man's lips tightened into a thin line. I'm Richard Walters, president of the Sycamore Hills Homeowners Association, and I'm telling you that the pool is not to be used until our annual inspection next week. It's a liability issue. Now, I consider myself a pretty even-tempered guy, but something about this Richard's attitude rubbed me the wrong way. I took a deep breath and tried to stay calm. Look, Mr. Walters, I think there's been a misunderstanding. This house isn't part of any homeowner association. My wife and I bought it a few months ago as a private residence. The pool is ours, and we've already had it professionally serviced and inspected. Richard's face reddened slightly. Nonsense. All properties in this area are part of the Sycamore Hills Homeowner Association. You must not have read your paperwork carefully. Now, I'm asking you nicely to cancel your party and drain the pool until we can get it properly inspected. I could feel my own temper rising, but I made one last attempt at reason. I can assure you, we read every document carefully before signing. This property is not part of your homeowner association. I'd be happy to show you the deed if you'd like, but this conversation is over. Have a nice day. I turned to head back inside, hoping that would be the end of it. I should have known better. You listen here. Richard's voice took on a threatening edge. I've been running this homeowner association for 15 years, and I will not have some newcomer disrupt our community standards. Use that pool today, and I'll have you fine so fast your head will spin. I spun back around, my patience finally snapping. And you listen here, Dick. This is my property. That is my pool. And in about five hours, my friends and family will be enjoying both. You're trespassing right now, so I suggest you leave before I call the police. Richard's face turned an alarming shade of purple. We'll see about that, he sputtered before storming off. I shook my head in disbelief and went inside to tell Sarah about the bizarre encounter. We agreed to keep an eye out, but decided not to let it ruin our day. As guests started arriving that afternoon, I almost forgot about grumpy old Richard. That is, until the police showed up. Two officers walked up our driveway just as I was firing up the grill. Richard trailed behind them, a smug grin plastered across his face. Afternoon, officers, I greeted them, trying to keep my tone light. What can I do for you? The older of the two, his nameplate reading Peterson, spoke first. Good afternoon, sir. We received a complaint about an unauthorized pool party and potential safety hazard. Mind if we take a look around? I sighed, realizing this was going to be more of a headache than I'd anticipated. Not at all, officers, but I think there's been a misunderstanding. This is our private residence, not a community pool. Officer Peterson nodded, his expression neutral. We understand that, sir. We just need to verify a few things. Can you show us your pool permit and latest inspection certificate? Of course, I replied, heading inside to grab the documentation. As I passed Sarah, I quietly asked her to keep our guests calm and explain the situation. When I returned with the paperwork, I noticed Richard talking animatedly to the younger officer, gesturing towards our house and pool. I handed the documents to Officer Peterson, who reviewed them carefully. Everything seems to be in order here, he said after a few moments. Your pool passed inspection last month and your permit is up to date. Richard pushed forward, his face flushed. That's impossible. They just moved in. There's no way they could have gotten all this done so quickly. These must be fraudulent documents. I felt my blood pressure rising but tried to keep my cool. Officer, I'd be happy to provide contact information for the pool company and inspector if you need to verify anything. We've owned this home for several months and have all the proper documentation. 
Officer Peterson held up a hand to quiet Richard. Sir, unless you have proof these documents are fake, we have no reason to doubt their authenticity. Richard sputtered indignantly. But, but they're violating homeowner association regulations. The community pool can't be used until next week. I'd had enough. For the last time, we are not part of your homeowner association. This is a private residence with a private pool. You have no authority here. The younger officer, who had been quiet until now, spoke up. Mr. Walters, is it possible this property isn't actually part of your association? Richard waved his hand dismissively. Of course not. All homes in this area are part of Sycamore Hills. I crossed my arms, staring Richard down. Want to bet on that? Because I have the property records right inside that prove otherwise. Officer Peterson turned to his partner. Johnson, why don't you go with the homeowner to review those records? I'll stay here and get some more information from Mr. Walters. As Officer Johnson followed me inside, I could hear Richard continuing to protest behind us. I quickly found our folder of home documents and showed the officer our deed and property records. Officer Johnson reviewed the paperwork, his brow furrowed in concentration. After a few minutes he looked up at me. Sir, you're absolutely correct. According to these documents, your property is not part of any homeowners association. It's an independent lot that predates the surrounding development. I nodded, relief washing over me. That's what our realtor told us. Apparently, this house was here long before the rest of the neighborhood was built. When the developers came in, the previous owner refused to sell or join their homeowner association. We headed back outside, where Richard was still arguing with Officer Peterson. When he saw us approach, Richard's eyes narrowed. Well, are you going to shut this illegal party down or not? Officer Johnson shook his head. Mr. Walters, I've reviewed the property records. This house is not part of your homeowner's association. You have no authority over this property or its amenities. The look on Richard's face was priceless, a mix of shock, anger, and embarrassment. That's, that's, that's not possible, he stammered. Officer Peterson turned to Richard, his tone stern. Mr. Walters, you called us out here on false pretenses. These homeowners are well within their rights to use their private pool. I strongly suggest you leave the premises now. Richard's face had turned an alarming shade of red. He jabbed a finger in my direction. This isn't over, he hissed, before storming off towards his own house a few doors down. I turned to the officers, feeling a mixture of relief and lingering frustration. Thank you for sorting this out. I'm sorry you got dragged into this nonsense. Officer Peterson gave a slight smile. No need to apologize, sir. Enjoy your party? If you have any more trouble, don't hesitate to call us. As the police left, Sarah came over and gave me a hug. Everything okay? She asked. I nodded, wrapping an arm around her waist. Yeah, just a nosy neighbor who doesn't know his boundaries. But it's handled for now. Let's get back to our guests. We tried to salvage what was left of the party atmosphere, but the incident with Richard had cast a shadow over the day. Our friends and family were understanding, but I could tell everyone was a bit on edge, half expecting Richard or the police to show up again. As our guests left that evening, Sarah and I cleaned up in silence, both lost in our own thoughts. Finally, as we were putting away the last of the folding chairs, Sarah spoke up. Do you think this is going to be an ongoing problem? She asked, worry evident in her voice. I sighed, running a hand through my hair. I hope not, but something tells me Richard isn't the type to let things go easily. We might need to be prepared for more drama. Sarah nodded, her expression determined. Well, if he wants a fight, we'll give him one. This is our home, and we have every right to enjoy it. I couldn't help but smile at her fighting spirit. You're right, we've done nothing wrong, and we're not going to let some power-tripping homeowner association president bully us. Little did we know, this was just the beginning of our battle with Richard Walters and the Sycamore Hills Homeowner Association. Over the next few weeks, it became clear that Richard was not going to back down easily. It started with small annoyances, anonymous complaints to the city about our lawn care, which was immaculate by the way, or our trash cans being left out too long, they weren't. Then came the letters, official-looking documents from the Sycamore Hills Homeowner Association, detailing various violations and demanding fines be paid. Each time, I would respond with a certified letter reiterating that we were not part of their association and to cease contact. But Richard was relentless. He began stopping our neighbors as they walked by, spinning tales about how we were disrupting the community and bringing down property values. Some neighbors, longtime residents who were friendly with Richard, began giving us cold shoulders and dirty looks. The situation came to a head about a month after the pool incident. I came home from work one afternoon to find Sarah in tears on our front porch. Beside her stood Mrs. Jenkins, our kindly elderly neighbor from across the street. Mike, thank goodness you're home, Sarah said, wiping her eyes. You won't believe what happened. Mrs. Jenkins patted Sarah's shoulder comfortingly. It's just awful, dear. Simply awful. I looked between them, confusion and concern battling for dominance. What's going on? Are you okay? Sarah took a deep breath. I was out front gardening when Richard and two other men I didn't recognize came marching up our driveway. They had clipboards and were taking pictures of our house. My fists clenched involuntarily. What? Why? 
Richard said they were from the Homeowner Association Architectural Committee, Sarah continued. He told me they were documenting all of our violations and that we'd be receiving a hefty fine. When I reminded him again that we're not part of the Homeowner Association, he… He laughed, Mike. He said it didn't matter, that they'd take us to court if we didn't comply. Mrs. Jenkins nodded gravely. I saw the whole thing from my window. That Richard was so rude, talking down to Sarah like she was a child. I came over as soon as they left to make sure she was alright. I felt a surge of anger coursing through me. It was one thing for Richard to harass me, but upsetting Sarah was crossing a line. Thank you for being here, Mrs. Jenkins, I said. I appreciate you looking out for Sarah. I turned to my wife, taking her hands in mine. I'm so sorry you had to deal with that. But don't worry, we're going to put a stop to this once and for all. Sarah squeezed my hands. What are we going to do? I smiled grimly. We're going to fight fire with fire. It's time to get legal. That evening, after thanking Mrs. Jenkins again and assuring her we'd keep her updated, Sarah and I sat down to formulate a plan. We spent hours researching homeowner association laws, property rights and local ordinances. By the time we went to bed, we had a clear course of action. The next morning, I called in sick to work and started making phone calls. Our first stop was a highly recommended real estate attorney named Lisa Goldstein. We secured an appointment for that afternoon and spent the morning gathering all our documentation. Property records, correspondence with the homeowner association, even security camera footage of Richard's visit the day before. Lisa listened intently as we laid out the whole saga, occasionally jotting down notes. When we finished, she leaned back in her chair, a small smile playing at the corners of her mouth. Well, she said, it seems Mr. Walters and his homeowner association have seriously overstepped their bounds. The good news is, you have a very strong case here. The bad news is, people like this rarely back down without a fight. I nodded, squeezing Sarah's hand. We understand. We're prepared to do whatever it takes to resolve this. Lisa's smile widened. I was hoping you'd say that. Here's what we're going to do. Over the next hour, Lisa outlined a comprehensive strategy. First, we'd send a cease and desist letter to Richard and the Homeowner Association Board, demanding they stop all contact and attempts to enforce their rules on our property. If that didn't work, we'd file for a temporary restraining order to keep them off our property. And if they still persisted, we'd sue for harassment and attempted extortion. As we left Lisa's office, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. For the first time since this ordeal began, I felt like we had a real chance of putting it behind us. But Richard, it seemed, had other plans. The cease and desist letter was sent by courier the very next day. We knew Richard had received it because we heard his bellow of outrage from down the street. But instead of backing off, he doubled down. Suddenly, cars were being parked in front of our house at all hours, just close enough to be annoying but not quite illegally. Our mail started going missing, only to show up days later, soaking wet, as if someone had deliberately left it out in the rain. The final straw came about a week after we'd sent the letter. I was in the backyard, enjoying a quiet Saturday afternoon by the pool, when I heard a commotion out front. I rushed around the side of the house to find Sarah confronting Richard and two burly men I didn't recognize. You can't do this, Sarah was shouting. This is our property. As I got closer, I realized with horror what was happening. The two men were attempting to padlock our gate, the entrance to our backyard and pool area. What the hell is going on here? I demanded, moving to stand beside Sarah. Richard smirked, that smug superiority oozing from every pore. We warned you about using that pool without proper homeowner association approval. Since you've refused to comply, we're shutting it down. I could feel my blood boiling. You have absolutely no right to do this. Get off our property now, or I'm calling the police. Go ahead, Richard sneered. I've already spoken with them. They know we're here conducting official homeowner association business. That's when I noticed the police cruiser parked down the street, an officer watching the scene unfold from a distance. I turned to Sarah. Call Lisa, I said quietly. Tell her what's happening and ask her what we should do. As Sarah hurried inside to make the call, I stood my ground, preventing Richard and his goons from getting any closer to our gate. You're making a big mistake, Richard, I warned. You have no authority here. Richard's smirk only grew wider. We'll see about that. The court date for your eviction hearing is already set. Enjoy your last few weeks in the neighborhood. I blinked in surprise. Eviction? What are you talking about? Oh, didn't you know? Richard's tone was sickeningly sweet. The homeowner association has the right to foreclose on properties that don't comply with our rules. Your fines have racked up quite a bill. I was momentarily stunned into silence. Could they really do that? A cold feeling of dread settled in my stomach. Just then, Sarah emerged from the house, her face pale but determined. I spoke to Lisa, she said. She's on her way. She said not to let them touch anything and to record everything. I nodded, pulling out my phone to start recording. Richard's smug expression faltered slightly at the sight of the camera. You can't record us without permission, he blustered. Actually, I can, I replied coolly. This is my property, and you're trespassing. Now, I'll say it one more time. Leave, or I'll have you arrested. Richard's face contorted with rage. You think you're so clever, don't you? You'll regret this? I'll make sure of it. But before he could make good on his threat, 
a sleek black Audi pulled up in front of our house. Lisa Goldstein stepped out, looking every inch the high-powered attorney in her tailored suit. Mr. Walters, she called out as she approached. I'm Lisa Goldstein, attorney for Mr. and Mrs. Davis. I strongly suggest you and your associates leave this property immediately. Richard puffed up his chest. We have every right to be here. This property is subject to homeowner association regulations, and we're enforcing them. Lisa's smile was shark-like. I'm afraid you're mistaken, Mr. Walters. I have here, she held up a thick folder, irrefutable proof that this property is not now, nor has it ever been, part of your homeowner's association. Furthermore, I have documentation of your repeated harassment of my clients, including attempts at extortion and now, apparently, unlawful entry and attempted property damage. Richard's face had gone from red to pale in a matter of seconds. The two men with him were looking increasingly uncomfortable. Lisa continued, her voice steel wrapped in silk. Now, you have two choices. You can leave now, never set foot on this property again, and we'll discuss the terms of the lawsuit I'll be filing on Monday. Or, you can continue this ridiculous charade, and I'll have Officer Martinez over there arrest you for trespassing and attempted breaking and entering. What's it going to be? For a long moment, Richard just stood there, his mouth opening and closing like a fish out of water. Finally, he seemed to deflate. This isn't over, he muttered, but the threat sounded hollow even to my ears. As Richard and his cronies skulked away, Lisa turned to us with a triumphant smile. Well, that was even easier than I expected. How about we go inside and discuss our next steps? Over the next hour, Lisa laid out a comprehensive plan to not only protect us from future harassment, but to hold Richard and the homeowner association accountable for their actions. By the time she left, Sarah and I felt a renewed sense of hope and determination. The following weeks were a whirlwind of legal activity. True to her word, Lisa filed a substantial lawsuit against Richard personally and the Sycamore Hills Homeowner Association. The charges included harassment, attempted extortion, defamation, and abuse of power. As news of the lawsuit spread through the neighborhood, the tide of public opinion began to shift. Neighbors who had been cold to us started to thaw, some even coming forward with their own stories of Richard's tyrannical behavior over the years. The case never made it to court. Once the homeowner association's lawyer reviewed the evidence Lisa had compiled, they pushed for a quick settlement. Richard, it turned out, had been operating far outside the bounds of his authority for years, using homeowner association funds for personal expenses and selectively enforcing rules to punish those who crossed him. In the end, the settlement was more than we could have hoped for. The homeowner association was required to pay a substantial sum for damages and legal fees, and Richard was forced to resign from the board. More importantly, a legally binding agreement was put in place, stating that our property would never be subject to homeowner association governance. But the best part? The homeowner association was required to use a portion of the settlement to build a public park and pool facility for the entire neighborhood to enjoy. It was a delicious bit of irony that wasn't lost on anyone. As for Richard, the fallout from the lawsuit was severe. Not only did he lose his position on the homeowner association board, but his reputation in the community was irreparably damaged. We heard through the grapevine that he was planning to sell his house and move away, unable to face the neighbors he had lorded over for so long. On the day the new community pool opened, Sarah and I watched from our backyard as families streamed in, laughing and excited. Mrs. Jenkins stopped by, a knowing smile on her face. You two really shook things up around here, she said. And I must say, it was about time someone stood up to that dreadful man. I chuckled, wrapping an arm around Sarah's shoulders. We just wanted to enjoy our home in peace. I never expected it to turn into all this. Sarah leaned into me, a contented sigh escaping her lips. You know, as stressful as it was, I'm glad it happened. Look at how the neighborhood has come together. And she was right, where once there had been tension and suspicion, now there was a sense of community. Neighbors were talking to each other, planning block parties, and generally enjoying the freedom from Richard's oppressive regime. As we stood there, watching the neighborhood celebrate, I couldn't help but feel a sense of pride. We had stood our ground, fought for what was right, and in the end, made our little corner of the world a better place. You know, I said to Sarah, a mischievous glint in my eye, I think it's time we hosted another pool party. What do you say we invite the whole neighborhood this time? Sarah's laugh was music to my ears. I think that's a wonderful idea. After all, we do have the best pool in the neighborhood. And so, as the sun set on another beautiful summer day, we began planning our next gathering. Only this time, instead of drama and conflict, we knew it would be filled with new friends, laughter, and the joy of a community coming together. In the end, Richard's attempt to block our access to our own pool had backfired spectacularly. Not only had we kept our pool, but we'd gained a whole neighborhood of friends in the process. Sometimes, standing up for what's right can lead to unexpected and wonderful results. And in our case, it led to the sweetest victory of all, a happy home in a thriving community. Are you hungry for more slices of stories? Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to never miss out on any videos. See you tomorrow at Story Slices.